All right, let's get some HDMI power. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe. Who knows? That's a way to start a keynote. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Nope. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's start again. Ah, there we go. Oh my goodness. Woo! We did it. All right. Well, uh, first, thank each and every one of you for making your way out here to beautiful Houston, Texas, surviving that wonderful humidity. I'm from the Midwest originally, so I know how it is. I love it. Uh, and I got off the plane last night. I was like, this is Houston. This is Houston. Yeah. Uh, so um, we're, we're really excited to be here uh, with all of you to really give you a glimpse into the future of Xamarin. Uh, like Dan said, and like Claudio said, uh, I love Xamarin Evolve. It was one of my favorite conferences of all time. I'm really excited to be here at Xamarin Developer Summit. It's really amazing to see each and every one of you here. Uh, I'm not going to be the only one speaking. My good friends, my best friends in the world, Maddie Legere and David Ortnow will join me on stage to show you some amazing things that we have coming for Xamarin developers. But before we get into that, there's something that I honestly have to do, and the entire team at Microsoft, at Xamarin, every one of us, we want to thank all of you. <laughs> Without you, we're not here. Every single one of you. The Xamarin community at our core is absolutely amazing. Whether you've created an issue, done a pull request, been in our forums, been in our chat rooms, you've created a library, or you're sitting in this room, or you're one of the thousands right now streaming live on YouTube, thank you so much for being with us. If you're brand new to Xamarin, welcome. It's an amazing community, and we love every single one of you. What I truly love about the Xamarin community as it's grown over the years is that we have these amazing community members, and there's only a few of them I could fit on this slide, but there's tens of thousands of you that I would love to put every single one of your photos up on here. But we also have amazing companies that have created an ecosystem around Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Many of them are here at the Xamarin Developer Summit, but it's not just these amazing companies building the controls, they're the amazing libraries that we all use every single day whether it's something like Prism or MVVM Cross, the amazing maintainers that keep this going, we cannot thank you enough. So thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts uh, for creating this amazing ecosystem and watching it grow and flourish really is near and dear to my heart. Now at the core of Xamarin, when I joined over six years ago, six years ago now, something like that, uh, we said our mantra was to delight developers. And that's still what we aim to do every single day when you're building mobile applications. Now, at the heart of our mission to de delight developers is all around .NET. We aim for .NET to be your platform to build for absolutely anything. Whether you're building a mobile application with Xamarin, a web application with ASP.NET Core, a desktop app with UWP or Xamarin Mac, or IoT, games, or AI, .NET is your platform to build for anything. It's what made me fall in love with C Sharp originally, when I opened up Visual Studio 6 for the first time, I started writing code, I got this amazing IntelliSense, and I could immediately realize that I could start building desktop apps and then take that to web and now to mobile or anywhere else that I possibly want to go. And that's where Xamarin falls in. We are your core of building great mobile cross-platform experiences. And we have an extremely proud tradition on the Xamarin team. We always strive to be native first, which we'll talk about a lot today. And of course, keep up to date with these same day releases and always prove that anything that a developer in Objective-C, Swift, or Java can do, you can do in C-sharp or F-sharp. And of course, we want to delight every single one of our mobile developers. And we can see this as the Xamarin community has grown and as companies have adopted it. Xamarin is truly loved by developers and trusted by enterprises all around the world. We love every single one of you so much that we wanted to showcase your work. And we've seen these companies, these verticals grow over the years. Whether you're a company like Olo or Outback Steakhouse or British Airlines or UPS, there's so many different companies building applications. So we wanted to showcase all of these 
And you yourself can submit your company, your application to the Xamarin Showcase by going to the aka.ms link. Because we want to showcase all the amazing work that you're doing. Our team gets to look at these amazing submissions every single week. It is absolutely delightful. So keep them coming. So today we're going to be focusing on three core things. First and foremost, I'm going to be opening up talking about how Xamarin is here to be 100% native and super optimized. And then David is going to come show all the amazing cross-platform development that we have to offer here on the Xamarin team. And then with all those native and cross-platform APIs, Maddie Legere is going to show you how we're going to make you super hyper-productive. It's going to be hot. So let me open up with our proud tradition of being 100% native, but also being super optimized and some of the really cool stuff that we have coming. Now, at WWDC and Google I.O. this year, of course, Apple and Google announced some amazing new operating systems. We're in the heat of the beta summer, literally in the heat here in Houston of the beta summer. Uh, and iOS 13 is on its way. I believe beta 4 just dropped, and we're all rapidly updating our iPhones and iPads and Catalinizing everything and hoping nothing crashes. Uh, now, what's really amazing, though, even though we often talk about iOS 13, the uh, Xamarin iOS team is not just an iOS team. They work on Xamarin Mac, Xamarin iOS, and everything that comes along with that release. So when we give you a drop and give you support for a new platform, we're actually supporting iOS, watchOS, tvOS, macOS, and yes, iPad OS, even though it's a marketing name, it's totally in there. I'm now have to slap it on every single slide. Immediately, is Xamarin going to support iPad OS? Yes, it's just iOS. It's totally going to support it. Um, what's amazing is you can start developing all of these applications today because a preview is already available. You can go to the aka.ms link to get started. We're keeping up with every single Xcode release and beta drop. So be sure to go and look at all the open source work on github.com slash Xamarin. Now, a lot of people have also asked about one of my favorite operating systems, if not my favorite operating system of all time, Android. Now, Android, we have also been working extremely hard on the Q beta. And I'm pleased to say that we will have it available in Visual Studio 2019 16.3 Preview 2, which will be out very soon. Uh, but you can also go ahead and get those packages uh, if you follow along on our GitHub. So that's iOS 13, Android Q, staying up to date as we go into the full Gold Master releases this fall. Now let's talk about once you have those different SDKs, how we package up and release those apps. And I want to start with Android and how we're going to help you build leaner applications. Now if you've ever built an Android application, you know that you have some code. And that's your base. That's your runtime. That's your C Sharp. Those are all your libraries. But when you actually go to package your application, something really interesting happens. You actually support a bunch of different ABIs or architectures inside of your app, like ARM7, ARM64, and x86. You also may support multiple languages and multiple resources. And then, since it's an Android app, and it's a wonderful, beautiful Android application, you're going to have super optimized icons, graphics, and different drawables. Now, what this does is it makes your app larger as your app gets more complex. That's why Google introduced Android app bundles. Now, if you've never heard of Android app bundles, you're going to be delighted. Because what Android app bundles do is they enable you as a developer to package your entire application up, just bundle it up, here with all of your languages, your resources. You upload that APK to Google Play Store. And if you support app bundles during the build process, what Google will do is when a user downloads your app, is they will automatically create a special optimized APK just for that user with their languages, their resolutions, their architecture. That means that the optimized APK that's delivered to your end users at the end of the day is 20 to 50% smaller in size, which is pretty amazing. Well, as you would expect, we, of course, want this support over at Xamarin. And the Xamarin Android team and tooling team has been hard at work. So Android app bundles are officially coming to Xamarin Android. Yeah. 
Just like Android Q, they will be available in Visual Studio 2019, 16.3 preview, which would also be Visual Studio for Mac 2019, 8.3, just divide that by two, and you're good to go. <laughs> Here's what's really cool. This is gonna optimize your APKs and make it 20 to 50% smaller, and the best part, you don't have to do anything. You just build your app, and app bundles are supported. No code changes. Now that we're bundling and shipping our applications, whether up to Google Play or the App Store, of course, we want the fastest app start time humanly possible. Now, over in the iOS world, we have the good, good life, with ahead of time compilation through LLVM. Ooh, it's great. Native bits all going nice and good. Uh, and that's one thing I do love about uh, the Xamarin, as, I, as I've been a Xamarin developer for over eight years, is the great compilation steps that we go through. Now, over on Android, of course, it's an interesting landscape. We do use just-in-time compilation, and we run our .NET runtime right beside that beautiful Art or Dalvik runtime over on Android. And we can JIT compile, but then, of course, has some other intricacies with it. You know, your startup time, and how many libraries you're using, and how many things need to be jitted. So you say, well, why don't we just introduce something like AOT for Android? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Well, we have that, actually, uh, already today. But there are some trade-offs with AOT. While it can super optimize your startup time, it also means that we're ahead of time compiling all of your code, so your app sizes can get very large. So the team, uh, the Xamarin Android team, took a step back and said, well, what can we do here in this space? AOT is kind of what we want, but we still want JIT. How can we kind of get best of both worlds? So we're introducing a brand new mode that you can compile your applications with that we call startup tracing. What Startup Tracing does is for Xamarin Android and Xamarin Forms-based apps, we've created a basically the small little profile ahead of time, everything that's needed for your application to start. We said, we know how and what libraries you need, so we'll just optimize those for you. Then when you compile it in this mode, it will enable Startup Tracing and use that for your startup. And what this does is dramatically reduce your startup time without bloating your app. And this is what that looks like with startup tracing on your left, and normal mode on your right. Now you're saying, that's pretty amazing. Am I going to have to worry about all my code changes, everything like that? Well, rest assured not. So here's what this is going to look like. In a normal mode today, when we did file new project, Xamarin Forms app, we're looking at around three seconds startup time optimized with about an APK size of 16.1 megabytes. AOT, for, for the ahead of time compilation, 1.2 millisec or 1.2 seconds. But of course, that's going to nearly double our APK size. Here's what's really cool about this. Is with the startup tracing, it is actually 1.5 seconds, so almost right there with AOT, and just increases it by a few megs. So it's really delightful. The best part is we made it a checkbox. Done. You can actually start using this today in all versions of Visual Studio, community, pro, or enterprise. It's available in Visual Studio 2019, 16.2. So we hope that you give it a try. Now, the one question on everyone's mind always is, what about Android X? When am I going to get Android X? Can I have Android X? What is Android X? That's usually what, be, is that the next version of Android? That's, that's really far out there. Well, one thing about Jetpack, as we like to call them, or Android X, is that Google has rethought the Android support libraries. And we all know that we love Android support libraries. <laughs> I mean, we do. Let's be honest. It's kind of the coolest part of Android, that you get to bring all of this cool new functionality and support all of those crazy old devices that we can't even find that's in our drawer somewhere. Well, Android X is really nice, because what it does is it breaks all those support packages up even to more support packages, because who doesn't want that? And now there's hundreds of them. So the team here, uh, the component team, uh, run by John Dick and Matthew Leibowitz, has been working extremely hard, the entire team, to optimize Android X. And I want to show you what this looks like. So uh, I'm over here. 
on a brand new file new Xamarin Forms application. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit debug. And this is going to start up uh, MI Android emulator, which is, of course, running on Hyper-V. Look at that. Buttery smooth. And what I want to show you here is that this is just a uh, Xamarin, Xamarin Forms application app compat. Uh, when I come into my watch window and I type this, for instance, I can go ahead and zoom in. And what we'll notice is that this is a Xamarin Forms platform, Android support base. It is an Android support V7 app compat activity. So this is just using out of the box components. So now what we want to do is upgrade this to Android X. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to manage my NuGet packages. And I'm going to bring in the Android X feed that we have here. And when I go to browse, we're going to notice that I have every single Android X library humanly possible. You're like, whoa, great. Glad I'm sure going to figure that out. <laughs> well, there's a lot of these. So what we want to do here is bring in a special package, um, if I can find it. Look at all of them. Android X. Oh, and xamarin.androidx.migration. Doesn't work. That's good. <laughs> mm, look at all of them. Up, up, up. There it is. Perfect. So we're going to bring in the Android X migration package and install that puppy. Cool. Except whatever that dialog tells me to do. And let's just go ahead and rebuild this. So I brought in this migration package. This is a special NuGet packages that gets run, and it diagnoses our application. And now what this is telling me is it's looked at all of my dependencies in my Android application. It says, hey, you should install this Android X lifecycle live data. This v7 app compat that you have installed maps to Android X. So this will gracefully allow you to install all of the Android X libraries here. But um, I could sit here and install all of them and find them manually. But what I have over here is all of them already predefined. So <laughs> what I'll do is I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to paste those packages inside of here. So here, what we're going to notice is something very important in my CS proj is that I have all of the Android X and the migration, but I've left Xamarin Forms and all of the existing Android support libraries there, side by side. A little mind-blowing, yes. All right. So we're going to reload this project over here. And what we're going to see uh, over here, we'll go ahead and let it reload and bring in all of our NuGet packages. I'm sure Visual Studio is very happy with me just modifying that randomly. It was so excited about my change that it rebooted. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's make sure all of those are in there. All right, so let's go ahead and recompile here. So what we did is we said, hey, you know, when you're building applications, you're going to have a lot of existing libraries, such as Xamarin Forms all the support packages. And what we want to provide is a way to do backwards compatibility so they can live side by side. So let's see if this thing is going to compile up and restore my NuGets. Still here. So I've done a clean and I've done a rebuild. So when you bring in Android X, you're going to have to obviously clean, rebuild your application. Um, the migration package will double check everything that's occurring inside of your application. Uh, so this is going to make sure that, hey, I actually added all my dependencies in there. Everything is good. And then, um, then we can actually redeploy our application. So let's give it a few seconds. Build is complete. All right. And let's go ahead and restart this up here. Beautiful. So here, in this instance, remember, all of my Android support libraries, I didn't change anything to that default Xamarin Forms application. All I did was add the migration package, and then I added um, the Android X migration package and all of those dependencies. <laughs> I try to be candid, but I don't let them. All right. So we'll double check here. It's going to double check everything is installed. And of course, we'll go to our full deploy. I'll give it a second here while it deploys. 
you got this Android build. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Now, if you slowly rewind everything that's actually happening in these, this output, it's mind-boggling. I don't have time to go into it, but it's pretty great. Don't worry. Whenever you see this, there may be lots of dragons. Um, that means that even all of you can't get that build. Um, <laughs> there we go. Perfect. So here's what I want to show. I just rebuilt this application, added Android X, and the difference here is now when I drop this down, even though Xamarin Forms is built against the Android support libraries, we've basically, the team, is smart enough to swap those out at build and runtime to the Android X versions. I didn't change any code. Frank is saying, I, I don't know how that happened. And I do not know either, but it's amazing. <laughs> now, I do want to show something that's really, really cool. So I took my Hanselman Forms application and I migrated this earlier to Android support libraries and Android X. So we can see over here, I did the same exact thing. I have the support libraries, Android X migration, and many of you might be writing custom controls, or maybe you're using Facebook or Google APIs that are using older dependencies. So here, for instance, I have my pull to refresh layout that I added to a collection view. And we can clearly see that this actual, in my source code, is a support v4 widget. So now if I run this application, what I've done is I added a breakpoint here to when I initialize this control. And again, I didn't make any modifications to my code. There's beautiful Scott Hanselman. I'm going to go over to our blog, his blog, I should say. And when I hit this breakpoint in my pull to refresh, this is what I want to show you. Remember that up top, this is a, it says it's a support V widget. Like, it knows that's the namespace. But when I drop this down, it is an Android X swipe layout. Any one of your dependencies, any of your source code can be easily migrated on your terms, on your time. Now, you're probably wondering, when can I get this? And the answer is soon. Um, <laughs> the cool part about how the Xamarin teams work is everything is open source. All of the Xamarin components, including Xamarin Essentials, Android X, everything that you use from the component team is all built open source on Azure DevOps. So you can go grab that feed today and start playing with it. The official support inside of the IDE to support this will come in Visual Studio um, 16.2, and we'll also be working on a right-click migrate, <laughs> of course, um, in 16.3, because who doesn't want to right-click more? I'm a Visual Studio developer. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> So what I've shown you here so far is that we're working to integrate not only the latest SDKs and uh, operating system support from Google and Apple that you can take advantage of, but optimizing it every step of the way with Android app bundles, startup tracing, and Android X. So those are the things that you can get your hands on. Now that you know what you can get your hands on and start playing, how do you go cross-platform? So let's bring up my amazing, awesome, best friend in the world, David Orr now to show you how. All right. I have audio. Awesome. And uh, thanks to everybody on the live stream. I know that we've been tweaking the audio as we're going. Now we've got another microphone, so here we go. Uh, when I suggested that James went first, I didn't realize what I was doing. How do you follow James, right? How do you get up here after James Montemagno has just wowed you with all those announcements. Can we give James a big hand? So many of us, yeah, we, we owe a lot of what we know today about using Xamarin, about the excitement we have around Xamarin to that man. Um, and I am so privileged to work alongside him. And uh, so if you get a chance to see him out in the hall, grab him, talk to him, tell him how much you appreciate everything he's done for the Xamarin community since he was a toddler. He started, 
because the guy hasn't aged a single day. Six years, that's, I mean, come on. So, all right, let's talk about, uh, James, share with you everything you know that we're doing, we, the proud tradition of Native, um, and we absolutely still hold that as a core value and proposition for what Xamarin stands for. Um, so once you have all those Native APIs, how do you take them cross-platform? Well, earlier this year, that's why we uh, shipped Xamarin Essentials. Everybody's using Xamarin Essentials, yes? Of course. Uh, and it's baked into every template now in Visual Studio. So if you haven't used it yet, you will be using it soon, the next time you do a file new. Uh, so these are all the plugins that you know, James has been building for you know, since he was a toddler. Uh, and uh, you, know, you need them in every app. So uh, the really good news is in the latest version, we have added email attachments, file sharing, and more APIs. As we're listening to you, working in the open, hearing from you, taking in your pull requests, thank you so much. Who sent a pull request to Xamarin Essentials? Anybody in the room? Yeah, we got one in the back. All right, yeah, good. <laughs> that was James. <laughs> Somebody on the live stream is like me, so thank, but yeah, so we're taking in pull requests, uh, we're growing the platform, and we have a lot of great things coming, um, and new things available for you. So hit that aka.ms, aka.ms, Xamarin Essentials, uh, check that out, and yes. So of course, Xamarin Essentials today uh, supports iOS, Android, Windows, um, but we think that there's room for more. What do you think? The more platforms out there? You're a cross-platform developer, right? You're like, give it to me. Give me all the platforms, all the time. So how about, one more transition, watchOS and tvOS? Yeah, right? So these are available today in preview with version 1.3 beta. So go check those out, explore those. Um, who's, doing, who's doing tvOS, watchOS in the room? A few of you, yeah, we got some hands. Very nice, very nice. All right, cool. So let's talk for a moment about one of our awesome partners, the Samsung team. Where is the Samsung team? Yeah, standing in the back, sitting over here. Make sure you spend some time talking to this group. They've come, many of them from South Korea, some of them from more locally. Um, spend time talking to them, check out their stuff. They do amazing stuff. You know, I work very closely with the forms platform, with the forms team, and man, they are just on our heels. Every time we send in a PR to add a new control or a new API, there's a Samsung PR right behind it. You know, it's like, all right, we got that for Tizen. We got that for Tizen. I hear people in the community coming to me and saying, hey, we've got libraries. Who, who's this rookie Java guy? This rookie Java guy is like, yeah, there he is. <laughs> like, he wants to add Tizen support? Who is this guy? I'm like, he's Samsung, you know? I mean, take his pull request. It's going to be good. So wouldn't it be nice if we had something that was ties in with Xamarin Essentials? So they have been working hard, and I believe available uh, soon or now, which I'll, I'll probably get to that in a transition. So for their wearables, for their TVs, for their phones, um, all their devices now have Xamarin Essentials support in 1.3 beta. So not only do you get the watch OS, TV OS, but all the ties and stuff as well. Isn't that great? Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. It makes the whole ecosystem better. It's wonderful. You can get to just about any device, anywhere, anytime. All right, so let's talk about my baby, something near and dear to my heart, Xamarin Forms. Uh, so we've got a lot of great things happening with Xamarin Forms. Who's a Xamarin Forms user ever, ever touched it in your life? All right, yeah. So raise your hand if you've never touched Xamarin Forms. You won't even acknowledge it? <laughs> so we know that Xamarin Forms is great. And I love that we started this whole presentation, this whole keynote, talking about uh, native and Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android, because without those, you don't have Xamarin Forms, right? You know, sometimes we forget, maybe you're new to the community and you don't remember life before Xamarin Forms, but it is all native. And when somebody says to me, it's one of the funniest comments I get. Well, Xamarin Forms, I would use it, but it doesn't look native. It's just like, ah, you know, I've, I've failed you somehow. I've failed you. I haven't told you. It is, and so I love starting with that foundation because we build upon that. So let's, let's look at what we, what's been happening. So um, 
You probably all remember the day I joined Microsoft, right? Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's in your diary. Dave joined Microsoft, this is amazing. I don't know who he is. It's totally cool. So back in 2017, I joined Microsoft. Uh, I went back and looked at our GitHub history, our pull request. So uh, if you don't remember, Xamarin Forms and Xamarin All, All Up went, uh, went open source at the end of March 2016. So I said, well, I'll give it like a, you know, a, the rest of the year as a buffer, and I'll start measuring pull requests um, and contributions starting in 2017. So this is January through June 2017. All up pull requests, we had 314, okay? Now compare that to 2019, 457. So quite a bit more activity, which comes out to about 150%, 1.5x, right? So the platform is growing, new controls, new properties, great things are happening. But here's what's even better. What about community pull requests? So for the first six months of 2017, we had 44 of them. And I even went and looked originally to some of the very first community pull requests. Uh, a lot of them got rejected. You know, that's the way it goes. We're all learning. Um, but yeah, some of the earliest pull requests that got accepted are people that are still contributing today, which I think is fantastic. So 2017, first six months, 44 pull requests. 2019, 116. 2.6 times. That's fantastic. So what this says to me is, I mean, we all want those numbers to all be bigger. We want all the numbers to be bigger. That the majority of the growth, I think, in what Xamarin Forms is able to do today is due in large part to you, the community contributors, the community that rallies around this platform, that uses it day in and day out, that tells us, hey, here's what I need in my daily work please, please, please address this for me, right? And you know, this is amazing. We're taking in more pull requests than ever before to the point where I'm going back to the team and saying, are you sure we're spending enough time on community pull requests? Like I think you know, we should like, dedicate more time to it. So it's amazing. Thank you very much for all of your pull requests. It's making the platform awesome. So let's talk, you know, I, I thought to myself, I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna talk to a hardcore, die-hard Xamarin audience. You guys are bleeding edge, early adopters. You're setting the trends in your communities for what people should be doing with .NET and with mobile development and Xamarin. So I know the audience that I'm talking to, and I'm like, what do I want to tell them about what we're doing at Xamarin and where things are going? What can you expect from Xamarin and Xamarin Forms and cross-platform in general in the future? So this is my message to you. Of course iOS, Android, and Windows are core to our platform. And what you get from that is you get the common controls. This is how, what you've always gotten from Xamarin Forms, right? What a button does on iOS, what a button does on Android, what a button does on UWP, take the commonalities, and that's Xamarin Forms API, right? And so what do you do if you don't have the property you need from that API? You create a renderer, renderer platform-specific effect. We've got like, you know, it slices, it dices. We've got so many different ways for you to overcome that. But what if we focused less on what the platforms have to offer and we focused more on what you want from the platform? What difference would that make in how we approach the APIs and the controls that we develop? Well, what that looks like is delivering this. The little things. You've seen my little things playground. We call them F100s sometimes. These are all those little properties that we didn't have exposed initially that you were like, but I need this. I always bring in this effect. I always create this custom renderer. I have a library of custom renderers that I bring into every project. Why doesn't Xamarin Forms just have these things? So we get these. And many of these are community contributions or came from collaborating with the community. So this is representative really of about the last year to a year and two months of things. And this isn't even the full list, right? This is just a part. But how many of you have benefited from this? You're creating less custom renderers. You're being more productive, right? Awesome. Love to see that. So we're focusing a lot more on you. What is it that delights you? As we said, our mission is to delight developers. I'm not here to delight Apple. I'm not here to delight Google. 
And I'm actually not even here to delight the Windows team. I love the Windows team, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I'm here to serve you. Um, so I feel like you are all the celebrities here that I came to see to find out what you're doing with our platform. What more can we do to add to this list? And I think one of the things on this list that really stands out to me, where is it? There should be a checkbox on there somewhere. Has anybody seen the checkbox? There it is. Third column, third from the bottom. Now, what's really impressive about the checkbox? And I did see a tweet. Did anybody see the tweet where the, where the gentleman said, uh, wow, Xamarin Reforms is really pushing it. They added a checkbox. You know, it's kind of like wah, wah, right? Because uh, it's a checkbox. But here's the thing. It represents something significant in the difference about how we're approaching the work that we do and what we prioritize. And it's exactly what I've just demonstrated to you. It's that we're focusing more on what you need. OK, a platform doesn't have that particular control. What can we possibly do for you to make it easier or to provide it for you? I don't care that I, Apple doesn't have it. I don't care that the HIG says never use a uh, hamburger button. How many of you married the HIG, the Human Interface Guidelines? Frank is the only one. Ignore Frank. <laughs> don't look at Frank. I'm shaming you. It's a good relationship. You and Hig are a match made in heaven. But you didn't marry it, right? Do you serve it, or do you serve your customers? Do you serve the users of your platform? Who's going to complain to you, right? So let's focus on that. And so that's what our perspective is. All the program managers, we care deeply about what can help you do better. And you know what's funny? James, I set a timer up here when I got up here, and I didn't start it. So I have no idea. I mean, I'm just like, 60 minutes, whatever. We're just doing this. We're doing this. All right. So here's what this also looks like. This also looks like visual. So visual, if you are not yet familiar, this is something that we released in 3.6. It's available in 4.0, and we're going to be revving on it. This is a new API that is set to address a key piece of feedback we were hearing from you. You would show us your apps. You would say, here's where I spend all my time. And it's in making your iOS and your Android look more similar. From the statistics that we have run, it's about 90% of apps that you're building, not necessarily per developer, not per company, not per, it's per project. It's like, hey, my customer, my business needs this particular app to look mostly the same or exactly the same. It's about 90%. So it's like, well, out of the box with Xamarin Forms, you get native. So iOS looks like iOS and Android looks like Android. Well, here's what Visual does. Visual says, hey, you don't have to go buy a separate component set that unifies everything. You can use the same components, the same button, the same frame, the same uh, you know, image button, whatever, that you've been using. Um, but you can just annotate it with visual equals material. And what we've done is we've taken the material renderers that Google already provides, and uh, we unified it even further. So it's like, OK, with Android, you get material based theme. With iOS, if you use the Google material theme, you get a weird flavor of material on iOS that's not exactly the same as Android. So what we did is we spent months uh, unifying that. And so that's what you get with visual and material. Visual is the API where we can start plugging in all the different styles and themes and types of controls. So Fluent, for example, we can release fabric controls. Um, Samsung, you have a style of uh, design. We can add a Samsung theme of controls, right? And then it's as easy as at the top of your app saying visual equals material, visual equals whatever your theme is, and your whole app gets themed that way, OK? So it's more than just styling. It's behavior as well. So that's why there's actual controls behind the scenes. So if you want to learn more about this, I'll be talking about it tomorrow, right? Today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. Yes, tomorrow. Uh, so come see my session, and we'll talk more about what Visual does. The really cool thing is we did the Visual Challenge. Anybody participate in that? All right, quite a few of you. Did you get your monkeys? Did you get your stickers? Oh, I did start the timer. I'm totally out of time. So <laughs> that's OK. It's OK. I'm more than halfway-ish. You know, we're good. Um, I mean, if I'm boring you, I'll just know we're good. I'm just kidding. Uh, so the Visual Challenge, if you haven't seen this, Sorry, I got, I got eager. If you haven't seen this, uh, David Ortnow slash Visual Challenge on my GitHub, there's like 50 plus pull requests. You can, you can branch, you can clone the pull requests 
check out how different developers approach different problems. They spent four hours, sometimes one hour, sometimes two days, building these samples. Um, and it's a really great repository of how you can use visual, how you can use shell, actually, which I haven't talked about yet, but we'll get to, um, to build some amazing apps. So check that out, it's a great resource. So of course, native is core to everything that we do, and so one of the main benefits that you get from native with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms is that as those platforms evolve, as iOS 13 comes out, as Android Q comes out, you get those benefits by, by, for free. You don't have to go like suddenly redo a bunch of stuff. You get it for free. Now with visual, you can also go a different direction. You can unify your design and customize it to your needs. So this puts all the power in your hands, right? Based on the different projects you have, how, what your needs are, you can go all native, you can go all cross-platform unified design, or you can split it up. So we're looking for more ways to make this easier for you. So please, let us know how this works out. And we're going, you know, again, I have a session tomorrow. Come check that out. We'll talk about it. So one of the other things that came out of uh, talking more closely with customers and finding out what you need is how can we make it simpler? Um, we've got some things that are a little bit more difficult. So we introduced Shell. So Shell is a new way, not the only way, to build your apps. And we think that it's going to be really great to build upon for the future because it's a new paradigm. It makes things easier, easier than what it is to do today using the existing navigation patterns. So today, you use a tab page, a master detail page, a navigation page, and if you've ever tried to do custom transitions, for example, it's a pain in the butt. It's a little bit hard. With Shell, it's going to be a whole lot easier because we were able to re-architect things. So I encourage you to try Shell, to use Shell, but by no means do you feel like you must use Shell. You can, uh, you can adopt 4.0 and 4.1 and 4.2, and you can keep rolling using the same stuff that you love to use today. But try Shell, because I think you'll enjoy the single container, the URI routing, and the templating that it provides. It's, it's intended to be optimized for startup time, optimized for rendering time, and very flexible. So real quick example on what it looks like to make this simpler. If you've ever done the master detail page, I imagine you probably have, you start out with code like this. You got your master detail, you got your content you know, menu page, but then you also have to have your list of menu items, right? So you got that other class. And then of course you have to have your master detail page, take the handoff from the other page, find out what you're gonna display and do all this stuff, right? Anybody, we've done this, right? That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of moving parts. Well with Shell, it's just this, right? whole lot easier, does all the same stuff, fraction of the code. So we lost weight, look at that, that's fantastic. So with Shell, by default, you get bottom tabs, top tabs, flyouts, uh, you can combine them, you can mix them and match them to your heart's content. And then let's talk a little bit about what's coming up next. So I've heard from the ArcTouch family here, yes, on the front row, hey, you know what, every single app has a carousel. Every single app we build, there's a carousel. Is that your experience too? Pretty much, yeah. So hey, why not bring the carousel into Xamarin Forms? So that's what we're doing, and the good news is, is it's piggybacking off the work we've done with Collection View. So if you come to my other session tomorrow, I'll have some demos, I'll be showcasing a lot of this work, we'll look at some code, we'll talk about how we can modify these things, it's beautiful. Um, so check that out, that stuff's coming soon, it's available now, uh, in Xamarin Forms 4.1, which is our latest stable release. You can just hit the flag, you use the set flags uh, in your main activity or your app delegate, say give me the collection view experimental and you can start playing with it today. Um, features are being added and as we get closer to feature completeness, then we'll remove the flag and it'll be stable. But we need your feedback, so please check these things out. So in closing in my section, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Maddie. You ready, Maddie? Maddie's like on the edge of her seat, she's like, let me go. <laughs> How do you see the world? Is the world Mac or Windows? Is the world iOS or Android? Shh. Shh. These are rhetorical questions. <laughs> Is it native UI or drawn? Shh. Is it forms or classic? Is it SAML or C sharp? I didn't put tabs or spaces up here, but I guess I could have put tabs or spaces. 
Is it MBVM, reactive, or this new thing called MBU? I don't know what MBU stands for, help. But let's embrace the best of all worlds. It should be Windows and Mac. It should be iOS and Android native. It should be all of the above, right? And this is really the perspective that we take. It's the perspective your customers take. And as much as we want to have our own camps and we have preferences, we embrace it all. Microsoft is about inclusion, and that really is core to how we see the world. And we embrace all of these things. So I encourage you to do the same, and we'll see what we can create in the future, because with that inclusive mentality, the sky is the limit, right? We want all the platforms. Let's embrace all the platforms. All right. So with that, I've talked to you about Xamarin Essentials. We've celebrated the awesome work that the Tizen team has done, and we've talked about the latest things that we have announced in Xamarin Forms and teased a little bit about what's coming next. So with that, let's bring up Maddie Legere. All right. What's up? Fist bump. <laughs> David just totally curved my fist bump. I'm a little bit offended. Um, good morning. So I'm Maddie. I'm part of an amazing team of people who wake up every day and come to work and work on tools for you to be more productive with Xamarin. So it's uh, awesome to kind of tell it all as one single story instead of a bunch of different pieces. And we have a lot of stuff that we've been working on over the past couple of years, all driven by your feedback and what you rage tweet me um, <laughs> at crazy times. So right off the bat, getting started with Xamarin, we wanted to make that a really easy, seamless experience for everybody. So we looked at how to get more people to check off the Xamarin checkbox in the installer. Um, in Visual Studio 2017, we had a pretty big install size, and we looked at it, and we figured out what people didn't really use, what was out of date, what you didn't actually need to get started with Xamarin, and we were able to trim it by about a third of the size in 2019. Yeah. Woo, yeah. So right off the bat, when you uh, install three versions of Visual Studio side by side, it's seven gigs now instead of 23. And with that, we were also able to make the install faster and uh, your solution create and your solution load and project load also really fast. So now you're getting started faster than ever. Then you sit down, you start to write code. And the Visual Studio for Windows team has been putting in a lot of work across the board for all the workloads. So you're talking Xamarin, ASP.NET, anything you write with C-sharp, basically. And they've been putting work into their Roslyn analyzers and code actions, refactoring, things that basically write your code for you, which is awesome, great for me. And we wanted to bring that over to our Mac developers for Xamarin, too. So basically, over the past year, the Visual Studio teams and the Xamarin teams and everything have been working together to re-architect parts of Visual Studio to make it shareable across VS and VS for Mac. The first piece of that that's landed so far in Visual Studio for Mac 2019 is the optimized code editor. So you get all of the C-sharp functionality and IntelliSense and code snippets and document outlines and go to lines, all of that inside of Mac built on a native editor. So it is lightning fast and you get emoji support, very important. <laughs> so this is available today. You can go download it, it's stable, it's awesome. One of the features we have for you in preview is the XAML IntelliSense language service for Visual Studio for Windows, now brought over to Mac. So your tag matching and refactoring, your binding context IntelliSense, linting, your XML namespaces, all of those things work the same as you see them on Windows, just for Visual Studio for Mac, and it's awesome. If you are on Windows and you're using IntelliCode in any of your projects, you might have noticed that it works out of the box with Xamarin. So what IntelliCode does is it, instead of alphabetically recommending attributes and controls, it does it based on you and your code, and you can retrain the model. And you literally just hit enter, and you keep hitting enter, and then you have a page that looks like something, hopefully what you wanted it to. It's awesome. So we know that XAML isn't the only UI language that our Xamarin developers use. A lot of folks love Android XML, our Xamarin Android native developers especially. We heard from you folks that you wanted better IntelliSense for XML. You were like, hey, the XAML IntelliSense on Windows is amazing. Do this for Android XML. So we did. It's that simple. All you have to do is ask. Um, we gave you better autocomplete, better IntelliSense. On the designer side, we gave you high fidelity layout rendering. We gave you layout linting, layout analyzing, 
and IntelliSense and auto-completion for all of your Android resource files, like your colors and your styles. Uh, one thing that I always asked was why it was AXML. You may be wondering the same thing. So originally, we had to change the Android XML extension from XML, which is what it is, to AXML so that Visual Studio was smart enough to pop open the Android designer and all the tools associated with that, right? Well, we've worked very closely with the Visual Studio team and we're very excited that in the next release of Visual Studio, XML will be the fully supported file extension for your Android layouts. Good? <laughs> you like that? There you go. All right, so now you're up and running faster, downloads blazing fast. You're writing code better than ever, whether you're on Mac or Windows. And then it comes time to build your project. So phones have changed a lot very quickly. I don't know if you've noticed this, but you kind of have a supercomputer in your pocket right now. And apps have grown with them. So they've become very powerful, but also very complicated. Um, this is actually from one of our sample apps, Smart Hotel 360. It has a bunch of dependencies, but it's also this really beautiful, fully featured app. And we wanted to make sure that Xamarin kept up with modern mobile development when it came to things like building and deploying your applications. So when you look at Smart Hotel 360, we have done a bunch of work over the past few releases of Visual Studio to decrease your build times, your incremental build times, and your deploy times, up to 50% for a XAML change deploy. So that should get you building and seeing your code even faster. All right, finally, you build your project, you look at it, it's up on the emulator, the device, you see your UI and you're like, oh, I just need to tweak that one thing. Close out, change the code a little bit, build it, deploy it again, look at your UI, code, deploy, code, deploy, over and over. Uh, it can be really frustrating when you're just pushing pixels or tweaking colors or just making sure that everything is lined up well. So what if instead of having to build and deploy every single time you made a small XAML change, you could just hit save? We are very excited to announce, here at Xamarin Developer Summit, XAML Hot Reload for Xamarin Forms. <laughs> there we go. I have been holding this in for months. All of my tweets about this have had fire emojis in it. I am so excited to be able to talk about it. Uh, do we want to see it? Yeah? <laughs> awesome, I was going to show you anyways, so. Fantastic, so let me get set up right here. So this is just a file new Xamarin Forms app. I'm pretty sure it's shell, but it works with anything you build. And there is no setup, oh, ah! here we go. Is this the right, yep, okay. Uh, there is no setup to get Hot Reload working. So all you have to do is hit play. It works on anywhere you can deploy and, oh. All right, well, we can also make a new app if we need to. Um, oh, that's fine. Ah, open this. Uh, there's no setup. So it is super easy to get started, this bad boy. No NuGets, no uh, extensions, no code changes, no network configuration, it's gonna work over debug. So if you're on a corporate network and you can't get your phone and your laptop on the same network, it's gonna be totally fine. Oh, my goodness, well, it hates me. This is what, I did this four times yesterday, it worked great. Um, let's, oh, here we go. Go, awesome. The other great thing about uh, Hot Reload is that it's just running your app, so all your build and deploy errors will still be there. But also, all of your live data, all of your third-party packages, all your, your dependencies, if you're using a, you know, a framework like Prism, or if you're using controls by Telerik or Syncfusion or any of that, those will all work perfectly fine with Hot Reload. So what I'm gonna do is start some reloading. I'll get rid of this, hit save. You can see that button goes away almost immediately. I can Scrolling too fast, add it down at the bottom, add a new button, and IntelliCode is telling me what to do. Thank you, IntelliCode. Uh, add, that's what I called it. Close that. 
It'll pop right up on my emulator. Let me shrink this a little bit. It does work with material design. Just hit save. Give it a sec. Right there. <laughs> It works with all your uh, lovely list views, so if I want to put a beautiful orange frame around this, IntelliSense is too smart for me, but close that, close it here, close my frame, save. Give it a sec, just like that. <laughs> and I lied, this isn't a totally brand new app. I did pull in one of my favorite extensions called uh, Debug Rainbows by Steven Thewissen, who couldn't make it out here to Dev Summit, but hopefully he's watching on the live stream. Works with that, awesome. <laughs> so I can see all my layouts and where they are with these nice, pretty rainbows, and I can go and say, okay, now I wanna look at it for reals. Instead of having to rebuild and redeploy, I can just set it to false. Give it a sec, it's right there. All right, happy so far? Good, thumbs up, excited? All right, we're gonna switch over to my Mac. Fingers crossed that all the HDMI stuff works really well. Make sure that that's uh, alive. There we go. Plug this in. Hopefully this works, great. <laughs> Give it a sec. My poor dongles have been in planes all week, so they're in a bad mood. Great, awesome, easy peasy. So this is the Telerik sample app, which is a very beautiful app. It shows all their controls. It's also huge. Sorry, guys. Um, so many files. It takes me like 20 minutes to find what I need to edit. But what I'm gonna do is go in here and go into this boarding pass page. I've been traveling a lot. And I'm gonna change this custom control, this header right here, to orange. Orange, again. And immediately it updates, it's awesome. Now let's say it's the middle of the night, I'm working in the hotel room, I'm being really lazy, I misspell it. With the new XAML editor, and with what you get on Windows, it's actually smart enough to tell me I misspelled it. But let's say I'm being extra lazy, I don't feel like going and changing it right now, or it's something that, you know, I misspelled and I have no idea I misspelled it. Uh, I can still go in and reload around that change so I don't have to stop and restart my app to fix that. Yeah. That's it, that's it. So, plugging this back in. Um, yes, gonna get the PowerPoint back up. Great, I'm current slide. So, what I just showed you was all of these great features that we're giving you out of the box with no setup, right on your Android or iOS emulator, simulator device, with your real data, this resilient reloading. Uh, I bet you're wondering when I can get it. So we are very excited to offer everyone here at Xamarin Dev Summit uh, priority access to the private preview, which is available today. It's like Oprah. You get hot reload, you get hot reload. <laughs> Fantastic, so you can go to this link. Uh, anyone who's watching on the live stream, you're all welcome to sign up for this private preview too. We'll be rolling it out slowly in waves. But if you are here at Dev Summit, we will give you these bits, hopefully by tonight, depends on if I fall asleep in the hotel room. That's it. <laughs> so you will be able to start using it right away with no setup. Fantastic. So I am gonna bring uh, James and Dave, my two best friends in the world, as James says, back on stage to wrap everything up for you today. Monk, monkey down, monkey, monkey down, down, monkey down, oh my goodness. Get, get that guy. Uh, are you guys excited? Yeah. We're excited too. Yeah. Uh, we're super duper excited that we can deliver none of these amazing features to all of you, but really focus on what we truly love, which is being 100% native, super optimizing your code, giving you cross-platform to absolutely every single thing that you could possibly imagine, and really focus on your needs and give you that developer productivity that you need. So we covered a lot of content this morning, and we have a lot of great sessions today and tomorrow. Of course, you're here. You're going to go see them all, so that's wonderful. We talked about iOS 13, preview available today, uh, Android Q, 
uh, app bundles, uh, jet packs, and all this amazing stuff. So hopefully you're excited about what you've seen. Come talk to us about it. We're going to be out at the booth. We want to hear from you. And yeah, make sure that when you have your tweet, you only use emoji for Hot Reload. That is the right. official yes. logo. Fire counterclockwise arrows. Yes. <laughs> and the nice thing about emojis is whatever operating system they're on, it gets the point across in that dialogue. It does. Exactly. Now, there is one more thing, though. Yeah. So you, uh, you know the Xamarin team. We can never pass up an opportunity to get feedback from all of you. So what we have at the Xamarin booth is a set of containers that have a bunch of new features we're trying to prioritize for our roadmap. You also all have a poker chip. So you can go to the booth, put that poker chip in the bin for the feature you want. I promise I won't rig it, although I have asked a few people and they won't let me. No, <laughs> don't prime them. Then you're going to answer a few questions in a survey, spin a roulette wheel. James built the app. It's very cool. And get some Xamarin swag. Now, I know you all want to keep the poker chips. Don't think you're being smart by not voting. We'll give it back to you tomorrow afternoon, we promise. <laughs> So everything that we showed you, we hope that you absolutely love it. We love your feedback. We hope that you have an absolutely amazing Xamarin Dev Summit, and thank you so much. All right, man. Good job, good job. All right. All right. I want my phone back. <laughs>